Okay, so in this video, we have two shapes, a rectangular prism and a pyramid. And we know that for both of them, the volume is 225 cubic inches, and that the each shape has a square base, so the bottoms of these shapes are squares, and the side of the base is 3 inches. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, a rectangular prism, right, can have rectangles up here on the face, but in this case, we have a square on the bottom. So that's something to keep track of. And so the base here is, is actually a square. And the vertical, right, the vertical distance here are formed by rectangles. And let me just fix that because I noticed there that with a little bit of a slant, don't want to confuse you. So our square here on the bottom still can form a rectangular prism, right? Because, of course, well, first of all, squares are rectangles. But here, this side is 3. I only give you one side because, well, every side to a square is e equivalent. So there you only need to give one side. And the pyramid has a similar principle because we have that same square base, right, 3 by 3. Except we're forming a pyramid. So on the, the lateral surface, right, these, these four edges come to a point. And my drawing is not the best there, but I think you get the idea. Again, this is a 3 by 3 pyramid. So the volume for both of these is actually the same, 225. So I would imagine, I'm just going to sketch my pyramid. If you think about this intuitively, right, if the pyramid's lateral surface as you go up comes to a point, in order to hold the same amount as a rectangular prism, right, it has to have a much taller height because, um, well, as it goes up, it's getting narrower and narrower. So it's going to hold less and less. So I'm, I'm sketching out here that we have a pyramid, but it definitely should be taller than the prism. And I'm, I'm not trying to scale, but, but I think the point is that in order to hold the same amount of stuff, this pyramid would have to go higher, because up here it gets so narrow that it can't possibly hold the same amount of space as the prism over here. With that said, our, our goal is to find the height of both of them. Right, so exactly how tall are they? Because uh, not only do we have our intuition here that this pyramid should be taller, but we can find precisely how high they are. How do we do it? Well, the volume of a rectangular prism is just length times width times height. We know both the length and the width. They're both 3. So length times width is just 9. So h is unknown. right? We don't know the height, but the volume is 225. So here we want to divide 225 by 9 to solve for h, right? because not 9 times something gives us 225. What is that something? Well, 225 divided by 9. Well, no, 9 times 20 is 180. So we're almost there. I know that 9 times 5, oops, 9 times 5 is 45. I know if I add 180 and 45, I get 225. So 9 times 25 would give me 225. So this equals a height of 25 inches, right? That's how tall this rectangular prism would have to be with a base, a square base of the side of 3 to hold 225 cubic inches. What about the pyramid? Well, the pyramid um, is, we're going to use the same principle, except realize that if a pyramid and a rectangular prism have the same height, whatever height that is, the pyramid is always going to hold a third of that rectangular prism. The point being that it just takes up less space right, because of those narrowing edges. So we can think of a rectangular prism here, same idea, length by width by height, and then say, okay, well, whatever length, width, and height that is, we want to divide it by 3, because the pyramid is one-third of, of that prism. So now we know our length and our width. It's 3 by 3, right? So we have 9, 3 times 3 is 9, times something divided by 3, equals 225. Well, 9 divided by 3 is just 3. So now we're finding 3 times a number that gives 225. So to solve there, I'll do 225, right? Divided by 3, just like before. So in fact, and this I think makes a little bit of sense, I, I think we're dividing by a number 3 times smaller. So we should get a height that's 3 times larger, right? And that, now that I think about it, makes sense. If the pyramid holds a third of the prism, it would have to be three times the height to hold the same amount. It's a nice inverse relationship there. 
So let's hope I'm right there with that guess. 3 times 70, just like 3 times 7, is 210. And then there's 15 left over, so 3 times 5 equals 15. Add them up, that's 225. So 3 times 75, right, is the height of the prism. So that height is 3 times larger than 25. It's a nice connection there. And with the intuition there, if you would, if you were quicker than me and realized early on that, oh, okay, the volume of the pyramid's a third of the, of the rectangular prism, well, then to, if they want to hold the same amount, whatever volume this is of the rectangular prism, the whatever height this is of the rectangular prism, the height of the pyramid should be three times more. And vice versa, if you found the height of the pyramid to be 20, 75, the height of the prism should be three times less. So nice connection there. All right, thanks.